Prince and Michael Jackson, in many respects, lived parallel lives marked by a deadly mix of an apparent dependency and enabling by their inner circles. I'm back with Sarah and Lonnie. We are joined by Dr. Robert Heisinger, physician, associate professor of clinical medicine at UCLA. He himself has cared for celebrities. Maybe a physician knowingly used a different name, somebody else's name in his entourage. Dr. Heisinger, have you ever been asked to do that? People have approached me with that, that, about that kind of thing. Repeatedly. Yes. Uh, and it's, by the way, sometimes we accede to that because I don't believe celebrities need to have everyone in the pharmacy know they have HIV, that they have herpes. Um, and so, so how do we maintain, how do you not succumb to the special needs of the inner circle and saying yes to everything they want, like opioids and benzodiazepines, and maintain their confidentiality so somebody doesn't swing by the pharmacy and see their name on something they don't want the public to know about? Very difficult, but I think that you have to use good judgment and you can't be wowed by these celebrities and you can't do everything they ask. And when you start doing it, you're in trouble. You Right. And, and but you and I were talking on the, in the green room that if you charge more than usual, if you extend your hours unusually if you travel unusually you're all Lana you're thinking hard about this you're already crossing boundaries you're already in trouble yeah and those are kind of signs the red flags that this relationship has gone from a professional relationship to more of like special. a personal, special personal concierge yes, right that's to right special relationship but, but, Dr. Dr. I have a question about this when if you say that you you know help these celebrities out by perhaps doing it under another name I thought the whole thing was keeping that database you know so that we can at least somehow keep track of who how many prescriptions if you use the correct name. I thought there was some like legal responsibility for doctors to use the correct name as opposed to an alias. That basically came over in the last year because that was routinely done and now it's only very, very rarely done. And, and really, I don't think anybody would, would, anybody enlightened would do it for opiates and benzodiazepines. Yeah. I can't imagine yeah. massive liability. Now you were approached by Michael Jackson's team. What'd you tell them? Well, I told them I couldn't do it, but I, it was painful because I was a young doctor got a huge money offer, gonna travel with him, all these great looking dancers, and you know, who wouldn't <laughs> wanna be Michael Jackson's doctor? But then when I got in and found out what the job uh, entailed, you know, tears, and I couldn't take it, but it was difficult. And you know, sometimes, I, ah, how can I change it? How can I make him, but it was impossible. He told me what he wanted. He didn't ask for a doctor. He told me what he needed. That's not a doctor. That's a, that's a servant, a slave. And, and listen, I, I worked in a psychiatric hospital for 25 years. We treated a lot of celebrities. And at first, I, I think I gave them special attention. And very fast, I learned that was bad for the patient. Mm -hmm. It's bad for the patient. If you want to be a doctor and be a good doctor to your patient who happens to have special needs or happens to be seen in the public, you better not be impressed by that person. You better treat them exactly like everybody else. If you want to make a little bit of this and that, you know, to help maintain their confidentiality or stay an hour after or so TMZ doesn't come by, okay. But traveling 12, 2,000 miles, I'm not so sure. And I suspect, I don't know what you feel, but I suspect he had somebody there in Minnesota, right? He had some doctor doing that sort of concierge service. Almost without question. Yeah. I, I took care of another very famous rock star, and I'm like, how did you get these prescriptions for so long? And he said, I have a thing, Rob. He says, it's like fly fishing. I throw out the rod, and I reel it in, and God damn, I almost always hook a doctor. Uh, and I remember, and, and you know, the, the celebrities crazy. That often... Is, that makes me so angry, I can't even tell I, you. I've literally had doctors lay down at the threshold of the psychiatric hospital and go, you don't understand how special this person is. I go, this guy's a drug addict, get out of the way, let him get treatment, for God's sake. They sakes. also, I, I, this uh, reminds me of Ozzy Osbourne when he was going to one doctor and not telling that doctor that he got X, Y, and Z from another doctor. And these doctors had no idea that he was already being prescribed. And then finally, He's, the doctor that prescribed charge hundreds of thousands of dollars when it comes out in the LA Times, his deal to make it all happen. Well, that's why that database is so important that they maintain the integrity of that. That's why the doctors, all the doctors are informed of what's really going on here. It's a new thing, but it's still something people can get around. And again, this combo, I don't know what you feel about this, Dr. Heisinger, but the, I, I it, pretty much 100% of my patients, when they die today, don't die of heroin, don't die of cocaine, they die of a benzo and an opiate combined mm -hmm. as prescribed, maybe in a little bit high doses, they stop breathing. I'm suspicious that's what happened with Prince. I, I would think the exact same thing happened. It's that, it's that mixing of drugs and it's, he, he maybe did some I'm, recreational stuff in know, addition. I, Who knows? First time I've really had a peer here sitting on the stage with me. You know, you're, I've, I've had other physicians, but I know you've treated you know, celebrities and stuff and I've had to do the same thing. 80% of the opiates prescribed in the world are prescribed in this country. What, what are we doing? What, what, is the, what is the plan? Do we have more pain? Are we more enlightened with our approach to pain? Or we just have a culture of A, fixing everything, and B, having to satisfy patients because the patient satisfaction surveys and the insurance companies demand it. 
doctors are beholden to the patients. Doctors give way too many antibiotics because patients pay money and they want to get. Doctors give too much pain medicine for things that are totally unindicated. Yep. And doctors accede to patients by giving them reflux medicine so they can continue to eat poorly and cholesterol medicine yep. so they can right. have. It goes on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah.